or welcome back to the channel welcome to the latest in my series of videos about how to pass an advanced bike test and in this video we're going to look at mirrors and rear observations now we talk about rear observations a little bit in the video I did about uh, observations and planning but I think on the bike it's worthwhile doing a little short video just to cover the basics and remind you what you should be doing in relation to your rear observations so the first thing to note about riding a bike is you have to wear a helmet and most of us wear full face crash helmets or modular helmets like this one flip front and the view out of a helmet is very restricted I'm effectively riding along looking through a letterbox and what that does is really restrict my view to the sides and to the rear I have very little peripheral vision and you know in normal life when we're driving cars or we're walking around or we're using the roads or even when we're going around Tesco's we rely on our peripheral vision a lot we pick up things that are happening just out of view to the side We've got quite a broad wide angle view and we might not see detail but we certainly pick up movement and things that are happening to the to the sides the problem with wearing a crash helmet is you lose that you lose that peripheral vision and you are much rel more reliant on head movements and the other issue on a bike is that the mirrors aren't the best uh, it's difficult to get the correct balance with mirror placements you don't want mirrors that are too far out to the side because that limits your ability to filter in traffic and one of the beauties one of the lovely things about riding a bike is you can filter through traffic it's not often you have to stop at traffic lights more than once so they can't put them out too wide I mean the position that these are in at the moment I don't know if you quite get my eye line view there but if I do that it's not bad see exactly what's happening behind me I can see the red Skoda and all that but there are huge areas off to our left and right that you simply cannot see into if you just rely on your mirrors and that's mostly as a result of the fact you've got your helmet on so when we're trundling along in traffic like this or when we're joining the motorway or when we're any, making any moves to change lanes or we're making any positional change it's very important to double and triple check those blind spots and they are significant on the bike think about trundling through Penrith here people faffing about doing stupid parking maneuvers blocking the traffic what could happen is we could get a cyclist up the near side that's a really common issue cyclists will nip up the near side and I want to make sure we're not coming into conflict with them when we move off so as well as checking the near side and offside mirrors before I move off I'm going to have a good shoulder check over the left and over the right and I know we talk about not doing things by habit not doing things out of routine it's one of the ideas about signaling isn't it we signal we think there might be somebody there who might benefit but we want to put a bit of thought into it don't we I actually think there should be a different approach with shoulder checks they should be habitual um, I'll give you an interesting example my stepson one of my stepsons has just passed his mod 2 last week he's got himself a motorbike he passed his mod 2 in the morning he's got himself a Triumph 800 it's quite a good bike passed his test in the morning with zero faults well done deck he did better than me on his mod 2 so I said right well, I'll meet you after your test we'll go out for a ride on your new bike and I'll ride around and after about 10 minutes he'd stopped doing his shoulder checks and I know he'd got into them habitually and I know he was doing them well enough to get a zero fault pass on his mod 2 which was a good achievement but straight away he'd, so he'd either decided it wasn't necessary anymore or so some, something had happened and straight away he'd stopped doing his shoulder checks so the first thing I pulled him up on was you need to start doing your shoulder checks again there's a few places especially where it's very important to look behind you and two of the most important areas are when you're turning left and you're turning right off a main road so I'll find a couple of junctions that we can turn left and right into once we get out of the chaos of downtown Penrith we'll do some left and right turns a couple of left and right turns off a main road and I'll show you the relevance of those shoulder checks because for new riders it's one of the things they forget about doing straight away and deck was a good example I need to make sure I'm going to a road that's been salted it's flipping cold today a bit warmer here two degrees than it is in the more rural areas but uh, it's pretty cold so let's start with a left turn we'll find a junction up here where we can turn left 
especially when we're going slowly in traffic like this, you're trundling along, it's important to do a left shoulder check just before you turn left. And that's to discount any possibility we'll turn left here that there might be a cyclist or other road user that's coming up your inside. Cyclists, electric scooters, I live in Manchester or Bristol, I was down in Bristol a few months ago, and uh, electric scooters are everywhere, and they will zip up your inside if you're not careful. So every time you turn left, left shoulder check, just to make sure there's nobody coming up your inside. When you're stationary and waiting at a junction, we're gonna turn left here, just a quick left shoulder check, make sure nobody's coming up your inside. You know, that quick left shoulder check, just as you committed a roundabout, very important. There's going to be a lot more electric vehicles knocking about, but I don't just mean cars, I mean bicycles, bikes, scooters that will be zipping up your inside. It's getting more and more important these days that before you turn left, you do that left shoulder check. And look at how I'm doing it, it's a proper look over my left shoulder. I want to look right back here into this blind spot and check that there's nothing there. It's not just one of those. When you're on your advanced bike test, I don't just want you doing that because I'll see you doing it. Let's go up here. It's not just proving to me that you're doing it, it's doing it for your benefit. It's really important that you check that space. So when you're turning right, the risk when you're turning right is that somebody might be overtaking you. And this is a more common accident than people might think. There's a lot of idiots out there. There's a lot of people who just don't appreciate what's going on. And maybe you are turning right and you're at the front of a line of traffic. And there's a queue of slow moving traffic waiting behind you while you're turning right, while you're waiting to turn right. Not every motorcyclist is an advanced rider. Not every motorcyclist has the imagination that we develop over time. It's quite common for bikes to then go out on the overtake, filtering at speed, past the line of stationary vehicles, and at the front of that line of stationary vehicles is a vehicle turning right. Now whose fault is it? Well it's the motorcyclist's fault for doing that, or it's the driver's fault for doing that. But it doesn't matter whose fault it is if there's something you can do about it. So when you're turning right into a junction, always look right just before you turn right. So we're turning right here, mirrors, mirrors, right shoulder check there and just before you turn right another little right shoulder check there and we're just making doubly sure that nobody's coming past us very important that and i need to see that on your test that you're doing those shoulder checks and if you decide to just do it by habit at every junction i'm fine with that unlike signaling where we want you to give it a little bit of thought i am fine with you habitually checking your shoulders at every junction. When you're approaching a crossroads or a junction to the near side and off side, have a good look into it. Move your head, look into it. Don't just glance around with your eyes, have a good look. But I can't express to you how important these left and right shoulder checks are when you're turning at junctions, especially in built up areas, but everywhere. They call them lifesavers for a reason. One day, that will save your life. Now it might not be this week and it might not be next month and it might not be any time in the next 10 years but one day you'll habitually do that right shoulder check as you're about to turn right and something will catch your eye and you'll stop and something will come past you. That day you'll thank me for this. Get into the habit of it. So remember mirrors and rear observations are part of the information phase. The information phase runs throughout the system of bike control. So we don't just do it when we're approaching a roundabout and leave it at that, we'll do it again. And we'll do it again on approach. Double, triple check on approach. We can do it when we're doing any of the other action phases, position, speed, gear or accelerate. We can always chuck another rear check in, another mirror check, another shoulder check. We want a good ongoing picture of what's happening 360 degrees around the bike. So the other place I want to talk to you about rear observations, mirror checks and shoulder checks is motorways and dual carriageways. So I'm just going to bob down here to junction 40. We're going to go one junction south on the M6. I will just talk to you about what checks are expected as you join the motorway and as you ride along the motorway. So here we are, exiting the roundabout at junction 40, about to join the M6 set, fires it down. Left shoulder check before we leave the roundabout, always an important one, that in case anybody's shooting up the inside. 
not just motorway roundabouts but any roundabout so on the more approach to the joining the motorway here I'm going to keep near side lane because it gives me a longer view and already all the way down the slip road I'm looking in the mirrors and I'm looking over the shoulder I won't put a signal on and a final shoulder check before I move out to lane one now catching up with that truck and this car so I'm checking the mirrors, putting the signal on, shoulder check before moving out and then I'm going to give it another shoulder check and move out because this car is likely to want to overtake this truck. And I know I've got this car coming up fast behind me, but it can bog off until I'm past this car. a bit of an arse in that Audi then but I'm not bothered because what I didn't want was that Citroen Bolingo oh I've got the cold spot that Citroen Bolingo coming out in front of me to pass that lorry whilst I've been overtaken by the Audi so just control the situation a little bit there but all the time now I'm settled in lane one it's not busy on the motorway today but I'm settled in lane one got speed restriction up ahead so checking the mirrors and shoulders and I'm just going to roll off the gas but it rolled down to 50 and let's see what happens with following vehicles now so this gives you a good example of how we should be checking the mirrors regularly and you'll see my head moving all the time I'm not necessarily doing a shoulder check every time I do a rear check on the motorway once we're settled and we're in our lane and we're in the flow of traffic. If you do regular mirror checks, you'll retain a good idea of what's happening all the way around you with the other traffic. But if you want to change lanes, or if you're going to slow down, it's going to change your speed or your course, you need to do a mirror and a shoulder check. So let's see if any of those circumstances arise up there. Now one other thing to bear in mind when you get to these 50 limits is that you are going slower than the speed restrictors on heavy goods vehicles. So we'll get in the very unusual position of being overtaken by a heavy goods vehicle. You see that coming up. Because they'll tend to stick it on their 56 limiter. But I've been a good lad today because I'm on the internet so I need to behave myself when we speak because I know the internet police are out there looking for me look 50 <laughs> it's just those regular mirror checks you, you tend to gravitate towards this right hand mirror check because that's naturally especially when you're in lane one that's naturally where the faster stuff is coming from but it's important to check that near side one as well we're on a long left hander here and I've got a bit of a view up the inside of that lorry and the other thing I want you to bear in mind on the motorways is other people's blind spots, not just yours. You know where yours are, you know where your blind spots are, you know where you can't see. Remember other people have got blind spots as well and I do not want you to stick yourself in another vehicle's blind spot for any length of time. So if we're coming up on an overtake on another vehicle and you're sitting diagonally behind it, you need to make a decision. You need to poop or get off the pot, one or the other don't sit diagonally behind vehicles for any length of time so that means you either need to completely overtake or drop in behind the vehicle and that depends on a number of circumstances speed what they're doing where you are how good the view is try and look in other people's mirrors see if you can see the face if you can see the face in the mirrors then you are visible to them it does not mean that they've seen you it's not, as some people refer to, eye contact, it's face contact. You can see that they're there, you can see that you are visible to them because you can see the face, but they might not have seen you, just bear that in mind. So I like to keep out of those blind spot areas or those diagonal areas behind other vehicles just to be extra sure that I'm visible to them. So here, for instance, once we're here, we are not visible to the driver of that van. He knows we're here because he's just come past us. I'm doing a mirror and a shoulder check here because we're going to move to the right. This use of the hard shoulder is changing. All right, it's marked as a lane. But we'll always do a shoulder check there. What I'm going to do, we haven't got the end of the restriction yet. It's still a 50 limit. There's the national speed limit, so I'm checking the mirrors. This lorry's going to come out and pass me now. 
So as much as I'd like to wind the gas on now, I can't because he's moved out past me. I'm going to wait, I'm going to check my shoulders, wait till the lorry's clear and move out one lane. And then a second lane with a good detailed shoulder check. It's a good long look over the shoulder like that and then back. So the other thing you've got to do when you do these shoulder checks on the motorway, because it's such a long shoulder check, stay relaxed. You don't want to be stiff on the bars because you'll start steering the bike then. It needs to be a really good long look over the shoulder, keep your shoulders relaxed on the bike. So we're going to come off at the next exit, there's our first direction board, touch 39, it's a mile away. So I'm already just checking the mirrors, I'm not doing shoulder checks yet, but just keeping a good eye, because I've been constantly looking at the mirrors all the way up the motorway. I know what's happening, confident there's nothing in my blind spot off to the right. But I'm looking out now for the half mile board. If the traffic was heavy, I tend to want to be in at lane one for the half mile board, there it is. Just from about half mile. So we're not really trying to force a gap. We're coming off, but today that's no problem. Maintain 70 at the moment. At the 300 yard marker, I'm going to have my left signal on, but I'm checking the mirrors now. There is stuff catching up with us. And I'm going to point out to you a really important shoulder check that a lot of people don't think about. And that is when we're exiting the motorway, just before we go onto the slip road, I'm going to do a right shoulder check, just there. And that's to check for any late exiting vehicles. There are some idiots out there. The second right shoulder check was just before I moved into this offside lane. There are some idiots out there who will swoop off the motorway at the last minute. And that right hand shoulder check just before you enter the exit slip might one day save your life. Remember, you're going to thank me for this in about 10 or 15 years time. Now we should, all, should be alright for salt on the road here, because that's the salt store, the local highways agency salt store. I don't know if it's just for the motorway, if it's for the roads, but this is a motorway link road. So this will be nice and salted on a day like this. We'll get a nice view of the Eastern Lake District in a minute. The Sleddale Reservoir. I do treat you, don't I? I treat you to some nice rides out. I've come out today in this weather, so you don't have to. But there you go, look at that view in the distance there, that's the Eastern Lake District. Lake District Fells, there's Sleddale Reservoir over there, it'll just drop out of view as we get down the hill. And now we've got countdown markers to a junction to the right, so I'm checking the mirrors, checking the mirrors first thing. I'm going to put a signal on, because there is a vehicle in the distance behind us, we've got a gritter here, he might turn up here, he's got a right signal on. So I'm going to wait here, I'm going to slow down and wait for him to turn. to go. So when it comes to an advanced bike test, what are the different organisations looking for? Well, they're all looking for the same thing really. They're looking for you, as a candidate on test, to have really good observations. Now, if you're doing a civilian advanced test with IM Road Smart or with Rosper, the examiners don't tend to use any comms. We're asked not to use comms as examiners for the IAM. Um, it's for various reasons, mostly an insurance reason because we become an instructor then when we're using comms, we're not insured for that. So, your instructor will ask you to watch your mirrors and look for a signal. Now, it's not really a problem if you miss an occasional signal on a test. We'll always find a way to get you back on track again and get you back on test route. But, it could be an indication that you're not checking your mirrors regularly enough. You're not looking behind you properly. Your rear observations aren't up to scratch. So if you miss one, fair enough, I'll give you that. If you miss two, well, it's starting to indicate to me that there might be an issue with your rear observations. If you miss three or four signals, then it's telling me that your rear observations, certainly your mirror checks, aren't up to scratch. Is that the speed camera van? So the guy who came racing up behind me in the polo now will be thanking me. <laughs> Getting it down to 30, because there's the speed camera van. Don't know which direction he's pointing it in, but there you go. Oh, has he back right? He's back right off. How funny. So yeah, one of the first indicators that you might or might not be having good shoulder checks and good, good rear observations especially is if you miss 
our signals. In the police, slightly different, they'll be on a radio link with your examiner. But he'll know, he'll know if you've got good rear observations, he'll know if you're aware of things. Um, I've had one or two candidates fail, one or two good candidates actually fail on test because they failed to do a shoulder check and put themselves at risk. So if you put yourself at risk, if you put yourself in danger, that would be a fail. I am road smart or any of the advanced bike tests, even if the rest of the ride is good. So be really careful with this, you need to be aware before you move out for anything of what's happening behind. And you can forget, you can forget what's in these mirrors. You can look at this mirror, it doesn't give you a full picture. You can forget to do that check and there can easily be something here, off to the right, that you haven't seen. Or off to the left down here, so make sure you check. As an examiner as well, I'm looking for those regular shoulder checks, especially before you turn left into a junction or right into a junction. Lifesavers. They call that for a reason, make sure you do them. If you're not doing, you miss one or two, well, all right, well, you've missed them, that's fine. If you want to get a, if you want to score a one, if you want to be up in the first or the golds for Rossborough, uh, the first for IAM, um, they need to be absolutely rock solid at every junction, left and right shoulder checks, don't miss any. Otherwise, I'm going to mark you down. And I'm marking you down for your safety because it's something you need to learn to do better. Um, in the police, just as important, you might think that just because you're hammering along at higher speeds and you've got an exemption from speed limits, that those uh, shoulder checks are less important. They are not. You can still get caught out in built-up areas, especially when you're on a blue light run. You can easily get caught out in built-up areas by a cyclist whizzing up the inside or an e-scooterist or whatever they call them. No matter how much noise you're making, how visible you are, people will still catch you out. But I always think this one's for you. This one mirrors rear observations, rear shoulder checks. This is for you, this. This is something you should keep for the rest of your motorcycling career. So that's it for this video. Hope you found it useful. The batteries are getting a bit low now. I'm going to go back and have a hot chocolate. It's one degree. So, hope you enjoyed it, hope you got something out of it. This series is coming to an end now. I've got one more video to show after this. And then, as a sort of finale, I'm going to show you an IM advanced bike test. I tested a candidate a few weeks ago who's also a YouTuber. And we are both going to put a video on to show you how the test went. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll tell you what the result is. But please come back. If you haven't already, subscribe get a notification. The test video should be on sometime between Christmas and New Year, something like that. And don't forget to go and have a look at the website, racelocal.com, loads more information there about advanced riding and driving, information about the books that I've written and how you get a day's driver or rider coaching with me if you fancy it. We'll have a ride out on these roads, maybe on a warmer day. It's a bit more above freezing than this, but yeah, come on, get in touch. But for now, thanks very much for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've enjoyed this ride out today, it's a nice day. We'll see you next time.